Hey everyone, um, I admit I don't quite know how to go about doing this assignment. I'm trying my hand at an inductive sermon for the first time ever, which means that, at least in my mind, the inductive sermon doesn't really have a discrete intro body conclusion, so I don't quite know when to stop this, but um, I'll see what happens and where it goes. But My text is uh, Matthew chapter 5, verses 27 through 32. This is a Sermon on the Mount. Jesus said, You have heard that it was said, You shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members, members than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than for your whole body to go into hell. <clears throat> it was also said, whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you, that anyone who divorces his wife, except on the ground of unchastity, causes her to commit adultery. And whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. <clears throat> Well, to enter into our text together, I want to tell the story of Mariah. She was a young woman born on a rural area, on a farm, in an impoverished country, centuries ago. Biography, biographers don't know much about her, but what they do know is that when she was 15 years old, she was married off to a much older man named James. James was not a man of high character, and Mariah was not a woman of much means, and so they tried the best they could for a year or so to um, make the best that they could of their marriage. It was hard. They didn't have much money. Um, about two years into their marriage, they uh, had a, their first child, and around that time, their country also exploded into a, re a very violent revolutionary war. To try to earn some money, James tried to ferry illegal cargo on behalf of the revolutionaries around the waters around this country. And once the dominant government was overthrown, he tried to use some of his connections from the war to get a government post in that new seat of power. That didn't quite work out. And so James, his low character, started coming out more and more. Um, he started doing more and more illegal activities. He was pretending to be veterans to try to get some of their benefits. He also went and bought up a bunch of land um, in this new country that was supposed to be given over to veterans from the war to pay them back for what they had done. So he, he scooped it up beforehand so the government would have to pay a very high premium for it so, so that they could give it to the veterans. To also make money, he prostituted his wife, Mariah, out. He would make connections throughout the, the towns and the cities around him, and these clients would come and drop off letters in their mail slot onto their front lobby, and he would pick it up, and late at night, after taking care of the kids, Mariah would go out and earn the rest of the money for the family. He was abusive, verbally, sexually, physically, he prostituted his wife out, and after he was rejected from that government job, as an act of revenge, he <clears throat> made some connections with the government. He found a very high-up politician. Many would consider that politician to have been the, the second in command or an influence within the government, and he had his wife seduce him and um, start an affair with him. That fair started during the, the summer of one year and lasted through the sp late spring of the next year. Not a very long affair, one year. But it was enough to, to build up a repertoire of letters and evidence on which James blackmailed this politician to get more and more money from him. In the meantime, Mariah was still an afterthought. This politician got together with his, the other politicians that knew about the affair, and they read her letters together and made fun of her writing, how uneducated she was and how bad of a writer she was. 
She was known all around town for for being a prostitute and a, a flirt, deceiving men for the sake of trying to get money. And it wasn't until about a year or so after this affair ended that politician's career destroyed that she was able to file for divorce against her husband after he had fled the state and nobody knew where he was anymore. He had left her alone, impoverished, with children. He had slept around, made affairs all over the place. And it was only then that she was able to file for divorce, claiming that he had committed an affair, and their marriage ended. Now tell that story because this woman, Mariah, she was a woman for whom sexuality, relationships, and marriage had been turned into a weapon, commodified for money, turned into a tool of power and injustice, and she became a, a victim of it. And we come to this text today, which is part of the Sermon on the Mount, which is a, a message that Jesus gives in the book of Matthew that's supposed to lay out what life looks out like in God's kingdom. But Mariah's story is a story of real life, the messiness of human experience. We all probably know similar stories of marriages that fell apart, marriages consumed by adultery and divorce and violence and abuse. So what do we do when that story of real life collides with this text? Jesus here acknowledges some of the, the messiness of human brokenness. He says that long before adultery actually becomes an act or reality, it is birthed in the heart through small indiscretions of our mind and our eyes. He says that divorce is an allowance based on the sin of others, knowing that marriage is a partnership between two people and not just one. But how can this text be good news to someone like Mariah? How can this text shape life in God's kingdom in such a way that it actually gives life, gives voice and power and agency to someone like Mariah who has suffered so much? And that's technically the end of my introduction to this. Um, let's see. Did I miss anything? No, that's about it. So that's my introduction. Um, I do have more in mind, but it's, um, yeah, it's not like a three-pointer, and I'm still trying to feel out what this inductive style will be like. So give me your thoughts, your feedback. My delivery is a little more casual because this is a video for class and not a pulpit. So um, let me know the material, what you think about the material, and I will see you on the message boards. Bye.